Hi everyone, welcome to the second episode of Process. It's been a year since the first one, and in between, as you may have seen, I've produced six episodes of my new series, Bros. It's about my childhood with my little brother Henry, the adventures we had as kids, and today I rely on those episodes to share with you guys my visual process. Four useful steps when you want to draw characters who suit your style of story. Let's go! One, start with simple shapes. Circle, square, and triangle. Bros is not a complicated story with plot twists and cliffhangers everywhere. So the mood needs to be touching, nostalgic, funny, and of course, cute. And what better way to express cuteness than to draw round faces? That's why I decided to reserve the circle only for the kids. A circle is more malleable. It can evolve into so many different shapes. The potential is limitless, just like a child. And to make our heroes even cuter, I wanted to associate each one of them with something kids love. Food. In a note for the animators, I wrote, Kevin's hair has to look like a kiwi and Henry's head has to look like an egg. Kevin is always wearing blue for three reasons. One, it's a reassuring color and you want the viewer to like and trust your hero. Two, Kevin's already wearing a blue shirt in another story, so I wanted coherence. And last but not least, blue's complimentary color is this golden yellow, which is the color Henry must be wearing because he's the golden child in the story. It's a subtle way to show that the two brothers are different yet complimentary. And every time we both appear in front of the camera, we make sure that I'm in blue and Harry's in yellow. This way, the viewers will not get lost. For the adults in the story, I use the square. A square is more rigid, more strict. It has less room for change. Adults are not kids anymore. They don't belong in the same world as our two heroes. They are figures of authority. That's why they need this different design. And the graphic element that harmonizes everything is the eyes. They are the same for every character, no matter what what age they are. Again, the mom is wearing red to show her energy and for coherence towards the previous story. And the dad is wearing dark green because it's the complimentary color. 2. Go all in with your most important character. So now you're gonna ask me, Kevin, what about the triangle? Don't worry, I did not forget. But let me first talk to you about a writing technique I learned watching Disney movies. See, when you're a kid, you're feeling all sorts of emotions, but you don't always have the words to express them yet. Sometimes the weight of a message is too heavy to be carried by the heroes. So in animated movies, it is very helpful to have a secondary character who can help you as a writer to convey those feelings to the audience. Is the role of Jiminy Cricket, who becomes Pinocchio's conscience and helps him grow? Or when Aladdin argues with the genie, Abu and the flying carpet's reaction make us understand that Aladdin messed up. In Mulan, Mushu is too funny and goofy to really advise her. So the writers used Cricky, who influences Mushu to ultimately make the right decision. And in bros, this character is... Mr. Bamboo, the imaginary friend. When you're not sure of what Kevin and Harry are feeling deep inside, just take a look at this cute panda plush. He's the most important character in the series. He allows me to be more subtle in my writing. That's why I decided to reserve the triangle only for him, so that he could have a unique cat design. It wasn't a short process though. In my archives, I found a panda that was drawn for me years ago for another show of mine and started sketching back from here. Again, I wanted to bring back the food Food analogy. So I have a question for you. What food is black and white and looks like a triangle? The answer is an onigiri. And you add this information in the graphic bible for the animators. For the eye contours, I wanted them to be a little bit gray so that we could discern the black eyebrows and pupils better, as they are so important to understand Mr. Bamboo's facial expressions. And he makes a ton of faces. Our biggest inspiration was Khan from Bleach. I remember watching the show when I was younger and loving this small lion, which I found so funny. So I wanted to create my own grumpy little pen. We added some stitch lines for more details, and later on he also loses one of his ears, making him even more unique. Would you guys like to see Mr. Bamboo as a real plush toy one day? Maybe I can try to make it happen. Let me know in the comments below. 3. Expression Sheets in July 2015, I started writing a manga, and I was struggling to find an illustrator. I knew exactly which style I wanted, round and cute, but still flexible, to allow a maximum range of emotions. And drawers who can do this style are very rare. One day, I received an email from a fan in which she said that she loved my vids, and there was a drawing attached to her message. I opened it, 
And bang, my mind was blown. I just fell in love with her style. I immediately asked for her number and called her. And that's how Fa and I started to work together. And today it's been more than seven years. We created six mangas together and now she helps me on most of my animation projects as she knows exactly how I like my characters to be drawn. With expression sheets, what you wanna do is explain the mood of your series to the animators. Those drawings will rarely appear in the final version of the episodes. But they help the artists working for you to better understand where you want to go. What is the atmosphere of your show? When is this story taking place? Who can actually see Mr. Bamboo? Why are those two heroes worth watching? If you can make your team answer those questions before they even animate a single frame, you have a winning recipe. The thing is, a lot of people can draw joy or sadness, but we want all the subtle emotions in between, such as pride, wonder, deviousness, curiosity, gluttony. And when you watch fine action, she makes it seem effortless. She draws like she breathes, always with a sketchbook, and I'm sure one day, the entire world will discover her talent. Four, finishing touches. Having appealing characters is one thing, but everything visual surrounding your heroes, items, backgrounds, texts, openings, have to match too. So I had to find old photos and videos of what my former home and neighborhood used to look like and send them to the background artists who will adapt them. How narrow do you want the street of your opening scene to be? What does a Chinese hutong look like? And is it fun to visit China during summer? Do you want the backgrounds of an entire scene to be exactly like this one fight from the 90s most famous anime in the world so that people who grew up in this era would feel so much nostalgia while watching it? Well, sure I do. The more precise references you give, the more people will feel that your story is anchored. You want to give the impression to the public that your characters truly exist in real life, that their adventures really happened, and a great visual development will give you enough confidence, which is vital in animation because everything you do takes so much, so much time, and you don't want to spend months continuously doubting yourself. <laughs> That's not a way to live. To add even more authenticity to the episodes, I really wanted to start each one of them with a photo album and a lullaby kind of music. Every time I choose the photos very carefully so that they match the subject of the vid. Also, I try to always pick photos in which our hair matched the Kara designs so that there is no confusion possible in the mind of the viewer. It's more immersive. Janos is the graphic designer behind those openings. I love how he decided to go about it with this film grain that makes the intro look old school and modern at the same time. It's a lot of work if you want to build a strong visual identity for your animations. But trust me, once you see the final result, you'll be very, very proud. I love my team. Conclusion. So that's it for today. It's late. There was daylight at the beginning of the video. Now it's the evening. I hope that this video helped you learn more about visual development in animation. I also hope that you guys can now enjoy the Bro series even more under a different light. Tell me which episode you prefer in the comments. My personal favorite is the sixth one, our first trip to China in 98. All those souvenirs really remind me of my childhood with Henry and makes me very nostalgic. There will be at least four more episodes, but I don't know if I'll go above 10 yet. Aww. I know. I see how I feel when I get there. And yeah, if you appreciate my content, please subscribe and see you next time for more funny videos. Peace!